Yeah, I, I, you know, and I, I work all over the world actually in tourism development, and I see this in every destination. They they want numbers, you know. It's the easiest easiest metric to record is we've seen X percentage growth in tourism numbers, X million more tourists coming, and you know it's kind of a lazy way of looking at tourism because. On the face of it, it looks like it can be good. You know, the more people that come, the more money they get to spend here. But um, in actual fact, you know, the more people that come, the more problems you have to deal with. And, and with mass tourism, we know that a very small percentage of the money will actually stay here in this region. Uh, with adventure travel, where people are having unique, genuine experiences provided by local people, um, with far higher percentage of the money will actually stay in the destination. So, you know, I think in terms of, they should be, people should be thinking about value and not volume. You know, the adventure travellers we know spend a lot more than ordinary travellers, and we know that more money stays in their destination. And it gives the opportunity as well with these kind of activities that, that we've been looking at in the last few weeks, it gives an opportunity for local people to own the businesses, you know, own the tourism themselves and benefit directly from it. And what that means is that they get to stay living in these beautiful places. Uh, they get to uh, stay in these communities, you know, and, and carry on with the lifestyle that they love. And uh, we don't risk, with mass tourism, you know, having foreign investors buying them out. And we've seen this in so many destinations worldwide, that mass tourism comes in and the big numbers come in, followed by big business. And what tends to happen is the local people gradually get moved out of these amazing communities. They don't get to live here anymore. Foreigners from cities in the West, they come over here and they buy your scenery, they buy your coastline and they buy your amazing villages and they rent them out on Airbnb and you know they become dead and sterile and the local people, the only jobs really offered for them in mass tourism tend to be the lower paid jobs. So you know this is this is absolutely vital and, and I think the businesses here also have a responsibility not to get greedy. You know you can earn a good living working in adventure travel providing a few experiences and a few activities for guests. and. I would like businesses here to really hold the line in terms of numbers and when they're approached by a big tour operator who's saying I want to send a volume of tourism, I want to send thousands of people, uh, but is also at the same time always pushing down the price. When they start talking volume, they want the price to come down. I think we have to say no. I don't think that is the future for the Balkans. And this is something that the Western Balkans Geotism Network share. So as I say, 67 different organisations, 250 private members now who agree with us and think that this needs to be preserved and we can't preserve this through mass tourism.